and welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is a Wednesday, May the 11th, and good to be back, of course, on the air. First of uh, two shows today, of course, coming up at 4 o'clock today, the platinum-selling Canadian pop artist Alicia Moffitt's going to come by and join us there, talk about what's been going on in her camp. Uh, we're presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. Check them out, bangtail.com, and, of course, over at uh, easyliquor.com. That's where you can get the bottle sent uh, directly to the door there. Just type in Bang Tail Whiskey. A good catchy effect there. And you'll get uh, a nice little buzz when you drink it, no doubt about it. And our good friends at MitchMax.com and, of course, our friends over at Hank Jr. Uh, Productions. Back here live on the YouTube channel for the Backstage Pass. And, of course, uh, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com, live on that very website right now. Please welcome in the Season 8 winner of American Idol. Been looking forward to this one for a long time. He's got a great single out there right now called Hello. Mr. Right Next Door, uh, Chris Allen on the show with us. Uh, Chris, what's up, buddy? What's up, man? How's it going? Oh, just great to have you here. And, of course, uh, being back with Kirsty Krause. She was just down there in Key West playing the uh, Songwriters Festival down there, too. We'll catch up on that uh, throughout the broadcast. Well, I tell you, Chris, I'm going to start right at the top. The, the current event news back there just, uh, what, a couple of weeks ago on Monday. It was you and David Cook and kind of that 20-year reunion uh, for American Idol to pop out there on stage again and, and do that duet, man. Did you get a little bit of uh, – I guess familiarity and kind of remember that 2008 season like it was yesterday. <laughs> so yeah, did all the weird a... feelings come back? Come back. <laughs> so I feel like the, I had weirder feelings doing that than I did like during my season. I don't know why. I don't know if it's like because it's been so long. I have no idea. I just I felt so weird being back on the show. It was I'm I, the only way that the only thing that made me feel comfortable was being on there with David because. I, we've done some things together. We did a tour at the end of last year together, and we've gotten to know each other pretty well. So that that part felt easy, but all the other stuff was weird and crazy. <laughs> and um, it was cool to see some of the like producers and cameramen and people like the sound guys and stuff like that. Some of the some of those people are still the same that uh, were there That's when I was cool. on the show. So that was really cool. Was it kind of cool catching up? Of course, I know the judges had, you know, Randy Jackson came back. And, of course, I know Paula Abdul was there, the current three judges that are judging right now for the uh, current seasons out there. Did you get a chance to catch up with some of the judges? And was it kind of cool seeing Randy and, I guess, Paula back in their domain again? Yeah, I, I didn't get the chance to, like, chat with them but um, or any of the other judges, really. But, uh, I mean, it was cool to, like, be around them, I guess. I mean, it definitely was all just very – it all happened really fast and – I think there was some COVID protocol stuff too, as far as like being in the same room at the same time. So we were kind of all like mm -hmm. in and out of all the studio all the time. So I, I didn't get to chat with any of the judges. <laughs> it's all good though. I love it. What yeah. you got? Go ahead. I, I just wanted to say shout out. I was on the phone with a couple of people today and I was talking about how we were going to be interviewing you here on the backstage pass. And they're like, oh man, his cover of Heartless was so sick and then because of that and just because of how down home you are and mm. like wholesome and i think american idol was really good as far as portraying your story being from arkansas and just like just being true to yourself and your heart that i know a lot of people uh even in my circle i had someone to say today say that they went and bought your album after oh. you were on the show so uh nice. shout out I've to your cover <laughs> well thanks i i i feel like I, I was talking to somebody about this the other day that song was kind of like like i grew up playing in bars in little rock and so mm -hmm. my and the thing that i had to do and the thing that i had to learn how to do is to like because you know there's just stuff happening while you're while you're playing music your background music and i hated being background music i was not like i didn't want to be that person now, and I'm also, like, the weird thing is, is that I don't really care to be like the spotlight person either, but I, I never wanted to create music to be like elevator music. So um, my job, whenever I would go play those shows was to like, it was, it was a competition with myself to see if I could get people to pay attention. And so that song was that for me. It was that, like Heartless was that like, hey, I need to get your attention. What can I do? What like off the wall thing can I do and that was I mean that was that so I felt like I was back in those bars singing that song mm -hmm. you know yeah it was like your show job we're like drop now I'm gonna do this <laughs> so uh, I, 
Go ahead, go ahead, you're good. Talking about, talking about back in the day, I mean, you credit a lot to your time as a songwriter really digging into songs when you were sick with hepatitis. Tell us about like that time oh, where you were like, you were stationed and you're like, all right, I'm gonna write songs. Talk to us about that. Oh man. Um, and learning the song, the craft of songwriting. So I feel like the craft of songwriting is still something that I'm, that I'm always trying to figure out and always learning about because I'm always like learning what I want to say or learning through other people's songs, like how to, how to craft a melody or like how to keep things interesting or how to like shorten things. Cause sometimes, uh, song, sometimes songs can go five minutes and they only need to go like a minute and a half. So, um, so I don't, I don't know. I feel like, I, I do think that in colleges, when that happened, um, I think I did realize I love music and I love writing music and I love playing for people. So, and I, I just knew that I wanted to do it for a living and I knew that, I, yeah, this was, this was it. This was like the only, this is the only thing that I had. Even if like Idol wouldn't have happened, I think I would have in some way been playing music one mm -hmm. way or the other. Like, you know, you talk about purpose sometimes and mine has always been to make music mm -hmm. and of course you're very good at it you made that, that right decision but you know a lot of people chris here talk about it of course on the show here and uh some of the candidates we've had this season and of course previous uh people that have been on that platform they always talk about you know the real work begins when you get off a show like that because it's amazing how you know you can get the label you can get all the the prize money you can do this do that kind of thing but would you say that's true and kind of take me on that journey since after the, the the hype of that show then you're like man i'm on my own i've got to pave my own way it's just a lot of it's a lot of grit grit and teeth right and just and just kind of yeah. clawing and scratching right i think so i mean it's all all i can tell is my story so like the um the show was was what it was like it was you only had to play like a minute and a half and it's also like it's a tv show so you're not like in control of a lot of things um, after the show you are, and you have to like have an answer for everything. You have to have an answer. Like what kind of artist are you? And maybe you don't know that yet, which is a weird, like it's weird to be thrust into all of that and not have all the answers yet. And not to have like gone through a bunch, you know, of like experiences to like been on the road a bunch. Cause I had just been playing shows in little rock. And so I, yeah, it's, it's a very, interesting arc of a career you know you're thrust into uh these these rooms with writers and producers that are working with the best of the best and so for me i felt like what am i doing here like i'm not i'm not ready for this you know i was like i'm so not ready for making music with these people and it was intimidating for me and that intimidation was uh it was kind of stifling in some ways yeah. but i also like but i also knew that i had to work i also knew that like okay and so i i feel like i became an artist in front of people or like mm -hmm. at least like through albums cuz i just knew i didn't want to stop like that first record I'm, I'm i hope people enjoy it but i go back and listen to it and i'm like it was all over the place mm -hmm. it was crazy we had a ton of different producers and writers i didn't know exactly what i wanted to do some of the songs that I didn't write were actually better suited for me as an artist than the, some of the songs that I actually did write. So it's really bizarre. Um, and then I feel like, you know, through the years, I've just, I've gotten more comfortable with myself, more like aware of what I want to do and just more confident. And it's taken some time and some, mm -hmm. some, uh some blood and some sweat and some tears <laughs> maybe a lot of all those things mm -hmm. uh but it's but it's been really good and I, I feel really happy with with where i'm at and the stuff that i'm creating in my life and yeah i love it good stuff there too and i love it too go ahead what you got well i was just gonna say if there's not blood sweat and tears then i mean it's clear that you put a whole entire soul into this and your record in 
your first record is was called New Shoes. New. Oh my gosh. Something. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 that was put out, and then very shortly later, you were on American Idol, and now and now you're celebrating like you had a record called Ten, and to really honor, mm -hmm. it's been ten years that you'd been off the show and, mm -hmm. and and doing your thing, and to kind of give people an example when you're off the show and producers are looking at you, they look at you and they say things like, "What keys do you normally like to sing in?" And you're like, "I." I guess I don't really, I don't know, like, yeah. let me assess my songs, you know, like they just, they start drilling you with questions that maybe you didn't necessarily look at. And so it's, I, I it's never cool thought to hear about, that from you. Yeah, yeah. I had never thought about stuff like that before. Like, you know, what type of, what cover out, like art do you want to do? Like what type of shows do you want to have what what's like the band right. makeup that you want to have because i've been playing solo shows my whole life and so um it's just yeah it's cra it's a crazy thing to think about sorry my, my daughter might Lots my daughter might be <laughs> throwing a fit back there somewhere it's all good man i got one of those i know how that goes trust me like i said she's at the school now like said, that's why she's not old when i do the the shows in the afternoon she stays at that school we pick her up later on today because she will make some noise and daddy this and daddy that hey congratulations <laughs> on on being a parent man it is one of the best things and honestly i guess how, i was gonna catch up with the family and, and check with you on how old are the kids now and of course i know you guys have been uh, married for a while there and you got three kids right yeah yeah we've been married 13 years wow uh Crazy. we have three children they're eight five and two they're wow. almost nine six and three uh in like a month so their birthdays are all around the same time which is oh, crazy cool. um that makes yeah, them all doing... similar humans right that makes them like if it's similar months then they're like the same <laughs> astrology i don't know if only that was the case oh. <laughs> i i feel like uh maybe maybe but i uh i have very three very different. different children okay mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, wait that kids. discipline didn't work on you this time what do i do now <laughs> i know yeah yeah well and my birthday is around the same time so is my wife's like our birthdays are all in like oh, a, wow. the span of a month it is a busy summer yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine yeah. too, no doubt. They're doing great but, though. They're my kids are awesome. Yeah. They're like they're they are very different from each other, but they're they are muses for songs. They are they bring me a lot of joy. Um, I'm just I I've, I've always wanted to be a parent. Like since I was 15, 16 years old, I was like thought I can't wait to be a dad. And so I'm not perfect at it. I have a lot of things that I screw up at, but I <laughs> I love being a dad. It's so fun. Aww. Love I it. always say, Chris, if it wasn't for mom, very... I, I couldn't do what I do. So, yeah, you're right. What were you saying? It's a team. Were saying? I was just going to say, like, yeah. playing with family, but you're also very well-traveled. You did a lot mm -hmm. of, like, college ministry work, and you've missionary work, and you've done a bunch of countries. Where have you all been? Oh, my gosh. I've been to so many places. I feel like... We're so jealous I... right now. <laughs> um, it... Uh... In college, I was with a campus ministry in college, so we got to do a lot of uh, missionary missions there. Mm -hmm. um, cool. If And so we were in um, Morocco, Mozambique, South Africa, Thailand, Spain. Wow. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, I went to a lot of places in college. And then since then, I've been to Rwanda and Kenya wow. and... Um, been to Haiti. I've been to a lot of places. I went to Asia for some shows. Me and David did a European tour last year. Oh, I went to a lot of countries I had never been to before. Um, yeah, so there's, yeah, I I love traveling the world. It's it like puts a lot of things in perspective, you know. And like you said, eating some good food, learning about different cultures and things like that, and just really understanding how much of an appreciation of people have living overseas, having an appreciation of music, just as people do here in the States and loving that too. Well, the singles, uh, hello, Mr. Right Next Door, which is out there across all the platforms. You can also check out chrisallenofficial.com, uh, season eight winner of American Idol, kind enough to join us today. Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you, my friend. Uh, let's let's play one here. Why not? Yeah, I'll, yes. play the, I'll play the newest song. Perfect. Here we go. Here we go. I wrote this song literally about my next door neighbor. He was uh, he's an old man, or he was an old man, and uh, he was 93, and he never he would never talk to us. Um, so I I wrote this song as kind of like the conversation that I had hoped to have with him, 
And then he ended up passing away, Oof. and I finished the song after that. Wow, and uh, it's called Hello, Mr. Right Next Door. There we go. Hello, Mr. Right Next Door. Have you got some wisdom for the rest of my life? I hope it's not too much to ask Cause I don't have much to give back Would that be alright? Like all the doctors curing cancer Searching for the right prescription I'm hoping there's one answer To a million different questions I've seen you sit upon your chair Painted pictures with each stare Tell me everything did you fight in Vietnam? Did you find you're not as strong as you thought you'd be? Cause like a bottle with a message in a language I can't read I'm drifting without reason, at least one that I can't see Mr. Right Next Door Have you got some wisdom for the rest of my days? Does the love we have run out? Does she make your time here count with your blood in her veins? Do you remember every season that has fallen from that tree? I think we're in a winter and it's one that just won't leave I'm sorry, sir, to carry on Finally found now that you're gone The words to say Not sure what I was looking for Knocking on the cobweb door Of a ghost anyway Then you whisper from your mountain With your wider point of view Son, if you are searching It's all that you can do Hello, Mr. Right Next Door. Hello, Mr. Right Next Door. Hello, Mr. Right Next Door. Have you got some wisdom for the rest of my life? I love that song. That's one of the best songs out there, too. Some great comments coming on the YouTube channels. We're live on the Backstage Pass YouTube channel and, of course, at the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com. And always good to rant and talk sports and, of course, music out there. Chris Allen joining us here on the Backstage Pass. Are we talking Pass. sports at all? We're going to talk sports. Yeah, Chris, I, I tell let's you what, do let's, yeah, we're going to do that. Gonna, Chris, look at that. Will, if he has. Will, <laughs> Chris Allen's asking me. We're going to talk sports on my show. We're going to talk sports on my show. I like talking show. sports more than I like talking music, man. <laughs> See, you're the other way around. Compared to some musicians, they like it the other way around. But I'm glad yeah. you're uh, the guy that like it out there too, man. We'll definitely do that. We'll take a uh, quick time out. Look at that. There's all the comments coming in from the uh, YouTube Yay, channel. So Lisa, and, and, uh, thank you guys for just keep them coming. And, of course, we'll get to some questions there. I uh, Got to take a quick time out, pay some bills here on the broadcast, come back. We'll get into some sports right away, too. It's just that's the current single. Check him out, Chris Allen Official, uh, <laughs> dot com, And we'll come back here. Word from Bank Till Whiskey and our friends over at MitchMax.com, the official merchandise provider of the Backstage Pass Men's and Ladies Apparel, coffee mugs, and a whole bunch of cool stuff you can get there right now. Uh, free shipping worldwide, MitchMax.com, M-I-T-C-H-M-A-C-S.com. If you guys want to support nice. us, we appreciate that, no doubt about it. Quick word from Bank Till and Mitch Max coming right back. More with Chris Allen here on the Backstage Pass. Stay tuned. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish.
Behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Kraus as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And back here on the show again, Kirsty Krause, Brandon Morrell, presented by Bank- Banksdale Whiskey, our good friends at MitchMax.com and Hank Jr. Productions, a season eight winner of American Idol. Chris Allen, kind enough to join us here on the show. We appreciate that. We're live on the Backstage Pass YouTube channel. Be sure to go subscribe to that. And, of course, check out the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Some surprises coming up in the next few weeks as far as guests are concerned right there, so keep it tuned there. Just heard Hello, Mr. Right Next Door, the current single from Chris, so be sure and check that out if you haven't already across all the uh, digital platforms. So I'm going to dive into sports just because Chris Allen said he wants to talk sports on this show. Uh, let me ask you this. Okay, Arkansas, I can say a lot of things. A great college baseball team. Love the university. Tell me about your teams, who you follow on the collegiate and professional level. So collegiate, I mean, it's all Arkansas. It's all we got. <laughs> uh, I mean, we got Arkansas State, and I went, I went to a smaller school in Arkansas, but, but I love – I'm a Razorback fan. Die hard. <laughs> So he's got it right next always, to him. We're always <laughs> repping the hogs here. There you go. It, and I feel like it feels I feel like Razorback fans are really excited at the moment because we're we're pretty good. We're mm-hmm. always pretty good at baseball. And I play mm-hmm. baseball, I love baseball. Uh the past couple of years we've been really good at basketball. Made it to the lead eight past couple of years. Yep. And then football, we ended the year on a really good, you know, note. So who knows what's going to happen this year? I feel like you know, I feel like it's pretty exciting at the moment. So we're uh, we're big fans in this house. I try to. My kids say that they were born in Tennessee, so they feel weird about rooting for the Razorbacks. But we try to we try to like put it in the blood a little bit. You know? <laughs> we're we're injecting them. There you go. Inject them, baby. Inject them. I love that. What about professional level? Yeah, professional. So because I grew up when I grew up. Uh, I'm a big Braves fan. Okay. Um, just always have been because of TBS. They were on, they were on TV all the time. Like mm-hmm. you know, every every day you could watch a Braves game, and it was the '90s. They were really good. Um, so I was watching them, and then my whole my whole family's Cowboys fans, but oh, I am okay. a Packers fan. All right, there you yes. go, Kirsty. So, <laughs> that's her team. Yeah. That's your team, seriously. That's Kirsty's team. Yeah. Wisconsin, so yep. like. Oh, uh, you're see, I'm not, but I feel like Arkansas is like the the Wisconsin of the South. <laughs> as far as because they rally so hard. I have no idea just, like, why I feel that way. <laughs> I do feel like you guys love like the Badgers. People love the Badgers. <gasps> Mm-hmm. People just recite things that they heard on TV to each other all the time. Like, that's normal. It's not about the weather. It's about the facts that they heard on TV. And it's great. Yes. And I love that. I love everything yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm a big Packers fan. I've been following, you know, since since the cool. 90s, you know, since, you know, Brett Favre and mm-hmm. those days. All right, I got to ask you this. This is like the Amazing. ultimate sports question here. We'll put you on the spot here because, of course, I have you know my opinion of it. My buddy does sports talk in Houston, and we've done some shows together before. He's come on this program, and he's uh, with ESPN 97.5 in Houston, which is a well-renowned station out there, uh, ESPN affiliate. Uh, so let me ask you about this. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, of course, coming back. It wasn't that long off season like it was the year before. He had some yeah. some things to repair with uh, the franchise, of course, with, like I said, all the – management things like that one i'm sure for you it's great to see him back on the sidelines two can we ever just win that elusive second super bowl is it going to be this year dude i don't know i mean if it's not this year i don't know when it's going to be i you know i was hoping that they would take Traylon burks in the mm-hmm. in the draft but he got picked up by the titans which is cool because i live here so may, you know maybe i'll pop over a titans game and i'll get to see Traylon play but <laughs> um but i you know i don't know i feel like I feel like they've shored a lot of defense stuff up, but you know who knows what's going to happen. I, I mean, who's he going to throw it to? He was throwing it to Devonte like every play. Yeah. So yeah. who's he going to use? I have no idea. Maybe uh, they they drafted like three receivers, I think. Yeah. So, so we'll see. I really have no idea. You know, I'm I'm glad they they still kept Aaron Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously Aaron Rodgers is back, but like I I I don't know. 
I don't know what's going to happen. They have to, like, get, he has to get over the hump, and I don't know what it's going to take. I really don't. I mean, he's just been, he's been up for MVP, you know, for so many years, and he's, he only has one Super Bowl, which is so weird. So we yeah. just need uh, one more. We just need <laughs> before he leaves. Well, yeah, um, I'll say this. They, they, still have, they still have Randall Cobb. That's still going to be the veteran there, too, at the same time. So Randall Cobb, I mean, not the guy that it was probably seven, eight, nine years ago when he was there. <laughs> They did pick up, I believe, Sammy Watkins in free agency from Sammy the Chiefs. Sammy Watkins. Yeah. This is and like Lazard. 100%. Lazard. 100%. Well, <laughs> Find Jordy. Right. Bring him back. <laughs> I don't think they need well, to bring Jordy, bring Jordy back. <laughs> I, I feel like they've done that stuff before. Jordy's like like Randy, Even with Randall Cobb, like it's like, like I love Randall Cobb, and he was a great mm-hmm. Packer, and he still is a great Packer, but his his – you know, prime is up. No. Yeah. Well, it's, so it's going to be. I want to some music. We can get him to play play another song. We want to be able to squeeze oh. that in. So the the album "Letting You In" in 2016. Mm-hmm. Listening to that, and for me, like I think because I'm down in Florida right now, I'm feeling all the vibes. You're giving me runs, and they're like all this production. Like the song "Feeling This Way" Ooh, like okay. was all up in the grooves. So what, I guess, what one do you hear from from most people or get more response to that, or what are songs from that record that you love playing live that's like always in your set? Um, yeah, yeah. So just about putting, ones do you that are play Feeling in the This set. Way live? Ever? I do, yeah, yeah. I okay, do. cool. Yeah. Sometimes cool. it's a, it's like the show starter. Um, uh, yes, so, I knew it. <laughs> and I'll do some like, some, you know, interesting things with it to kind of, you know, make it feel like a show starter, but, uh, but yeah, I, I really love that song. It was, it was kind of, it was kind of one of those songs it I had the chorus down. forever, and it's, it's really simple as far as the chords go. Like it's, it's pretty repetitive, but I've learned to really like those songs and um, just kind of fall in love with them. So, and there's a, there's a good groove to it. I, the thing that I love about mm-hmm. it the most is that it's probably a, it is a, it's a groovy song, but it's like a it's like the grooviest song about depression of all time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like an uh, it's like an you know an oxymoron because you're like the the lyrics are a little different, but but it's so groovy that you're like you just want to vibe to it. It's funny. Yeah, that's cool. I love it. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, we always we always we try to play that one a lot. And then uh, there's a song called Waves that I think a lot of people relate to. It's a uh, it's that like relationship song where. Um, I know in my relationship, like my wife is the, uh, she's the thing that kind of keeps us going and mm-hmm. keeps things interesting. And, uh, and you know, it's, uh, it, that's what the song is about. It's like falling in love with a crazy person. <laughs> and she's not, <laughs> and, and she's crazy in a good way. Like she just, she's, she's a force and I'm mm-hmm. just happy to be around her and in her, in her presence, she makes a lot of things happen. Oh. The rock that holds it together, no doubt. Well, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Tim because I know Kirsty brought that up a little bit earlier in the show. But I tell you what, let's have you uh, play another one here on the show for us. Got about uh, five or six minutes left with Chris here on the program. And, of course, I know some new stuff you guys are working on uh, coming out. We we'll definitely want to give you the chance to, to speak on that, too, because I know you guys are looking for some new music coming out here in 2022. And, my friend, it's uh, it's all yours again. And, of course, we're going to have you back, no doubt. So, Yeah, brother. Maybe after the Packers win the <laughs> be special yes. guest. I like we'll that. Packers Super Bowl then. championship special guest Chris Allen to talk sports. I like that. Yes. <laughs> here's a here's another new song that came out last year. It's called Hallelujah for Now. Collecting pages of evidence in every corner of your mind Making sure you can disprove something no man can define And I'd stand on my argument, God knows I've tried But it's hard to get your footing on the surface of the wind, alright So what am I supposed to do? While I'm waiting for the nothingness to be proof Cause I swear somebody's listening when I'm talking to the moon So hallelujah, hallelujah for now Turn into new 
questions in time So I should make my peace with the fact that I'll probably die I'll die Collecting pages of evidence in every corner of my mind Making sure that I can prove something no man can define And I'll stand on my argument, God knows I'll try But it's hard to get your footing on a mountain that is turned upside down So what am I supposed to do? Oh I've been in sanctuaries that are just a room But I caught a glimpse of heaven in Toronto listening to Claire de Lune So hallelujah, hallelujah for now Chris Allen here on the Backstage Pass to Brandon Morrell and Kirsty Krause. It is a fantastic day to do a show like this, too, especially mm-hmm. talking sports and music. Uh, great comments coming in there. Keep them coming. Throw them up there on the screen, no doubt. We're live on the Backstage Pass YouTube channel and, of course, at the uh, sportsguyspodcast.com. And if you missed the live interview today, uh, guess what? You can go check it out tomorrow and 365 days throughout the year because they're all archived right up there. Uh, coming up here in a few weeks, we hope to hear from Nashville recording artist uh, Dylan Scott here on the program. A few announcements there probably coming up. And, of course, say a whole lot more. In fact, I'm actually in touch with uh, current Idol contestant Hunter Girl, who may be coming on this very show oh. coming up here in a few weeks, too. So definitely a lot of great things. It's season 20. He's got uh, a couple of weeks left. And I'll tell you what, it gets toward the finale. It's, uh, Chris, I'll tell you, it's, <laughs> it's like suspense every single week. Vote, vote, vote for your favorites. And <laughs> you never know what's going to happen through a competition like that. I think it's a, a great thing for the music industry. Tell you what, we'll do one final uh, timeout, come back and uh, put a little rapid fire here with Chris. And again, if the Packers win a Super Bowl, Chris gets to guest yeah. co-host with us here on the show and talk sports for a full hour. Oh, I like that. I like it. It's a good deal. That'll be a good show, man. That'll, That'll be a good, good show. show. <laughs> we'll go back, word from Bank Joe Whiskey and Mitch Max. Hang tight. More with Chris Allen here on the uh, Backstage Pass YouTube channel. Go subscribe and, of course, go check out the sportsguyspodcast.com. More to come here. Hang tight. The Bango pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrell and his co-host, Kirsty Krause, as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... And welcome back here to the show. A few more minutes with American Idol winner season eight, Chris Allen here, Brandon Morrell, and Kirsty Krause, presented by our good friends at Bangtail Whiskey, MitchMax.com, and Hank Jr. Productions live on our YouTube channel. Go subscribe to the Backstage Pass, and of course, uh, check out the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Well, I tell you, Chris, I have a great, great viewer question here, so this is a good one. Uh, can you tell us about the next single that's coming out? Anything? Oh. What can so- you say? Yeah, I can say. Uh, so okay. actually, I've been recording some covers uh, this year, which is like the first time since the show that I've ever like recorded a cover and put it out. Um, this and we've got one in the pipeline It's coming out June second. Um, it's a song. It is a Mister Rogers song. I know it sounds so uh-huh. bizarre, but 
But I found this song because I was like, you know, going down YouTube rabbit holes. And I saw him sing this song to Joan Rivers when she was like a host on The Tonight Show. Um, I think filling in for somebody. And he was the guest. And he sang the song to her. And it like, like just sitting there in the chair, he sang this song that I guess was on the show. And I had never seen it because I didn't watch Mr. Rogers growing up. And um, it just like hit me in a like a really... I'm like crying while I'm, you know, Aww. like watching my, like, man, this song is just so great. And it's called It's You I Like. And it just, it, it's everything. It's like, it, it's, it's like a song to my children, but it's also a song to like the younger me as well. Like just singing that song when I was recording it, I recorded it literally right here, just like this. Um, and, uh, and it's just it the song is great and uh and putting it out <laughs> i don't know it's a really really simple sweet song it's called it's you i like June second watch out for it too like June i said we'd love like to, <clears throat> yeah. to have you back on the show to to like i said promote it definitely and to uh, talk about it too for all the fans out there too at the same time where they can get uh music i'm gonna stay with the rapid fire theme and shauna's you coming in here too i love this question. question yeah look at this yeah who um, would you like to collaborate with like who that would, who would i like to collaborate with this is always such a weird question, I feel <laughs> like. Um, as much as, because the, cause the moment that I say something like Paul McCartney, that sounds great on its head, but then the moment that I think about being in the room with him, I feel like it would just, I wouldn't know what to do. I would like, I would <laughs> forget how to play guitar. I would forget how to sing and write songs. So, uh, but that would be like, if I was in a good place, that'd probably be where I'd go. Mm -hmm. Either that or like, or working with, with, um, someone like, uh, like a rapper or something like, like Kendrick or something like that to where yeah. I feel like I grew up listening to rap music so much that it's, it's in there. Mm -hmm. I don't write rap music, but I do enjoy the, like the lyrical aspect of it and how like quick they are with lyrics and they can just like, I, I can't do that. And I feel like something that'd be really interesting to write music for somebody while that they're while they're doing that. That'd be really fun. Love that too. All right, I got to do with this one. Yeah, there you go. Cannot wait for the new song. And look at that, just comments no, coming in. Do <clears throat> what you got? Go ahead. I'll do it. Okay. So, interesting fact. Uh, just taking that in. Lots of birthdays on the same day. Do you get your own cake because you share? You know, no. no? Usually. Okay, so when no. you all have the cake together, what is it normally? Uh, we usually go for like an. So I I grew up. Uh, my first job was I worked uh, for TCBY, okay. and so yeah. and I worked there for. Do you guys know what TCBY is? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, sure do. I'm just making sure. Um, I don't wait, think it's around anymore. Inter so cable? Internet. What's that? Is that? Cable? No, you don't no, know. It's, it's, uh, Chris can tell you what it is. I know what it is, but Chris will so tell you. TCBY is the country's best <laughs> yogurt. I work at an ice cream shop. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and so uh, I worked there so long, I got put on, on cake duty. So I'd make ice cream cakes. <laughs> yes. And um, so we like ice cream cakes around here. They're delicious. Nice. Okay. That's my, like that that was my question, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're good. I love that. Shauna says frozen yogurt. It's, it's it's good. The country's best yogurt. I went and traveled with it for a few years and I definitely would stop and then try the latest things when it came to ice cream. They made some of the White best cakes. Moose, baby. That White chocolate like, moose was, was, was kick ass. It was, it was good stuff. Uh, hey, sticking to the food category, let's do this one because uh, my, my beautiful co-host came up with this question. She loves asking this one, but I've got, I've got to steal it from her today. It just feels like the right time with food. Chris, <laughs> if you guys are ordering pizza in your household, and it's just a Chris Allen pizza. Nobody else can have a slice. What toppings go on it? Just for Ooh. you. It's for you. No sharing. <laughs> Don't have to I'm share. I'm going like I'm going super simple Italian, like prosciutto, basil. Yes. Okay. Like the mozzarella, mozzarella cheese. Yeah, like very Love very it. Italian pizza. Like that's that's kind of the vibe. I like that. I don't want too fun. much meat. I, I like to taste the sauce, but like, uh, you know, like a, a thin sliced prosciutto or something like that. Okay. I like that. That's my favorite thin crust too. What you got? Where is the go-to place that you frequent when you guys go out to eat in Nashville? Ooh. 
if I'm by myself and it's late night, I go to cookout. I don't know if you guys have been to yes, cookout. cookout. <laughs> Cookout's so good. I love cookout. Um, love but it. we also there's a there's a there's a burger joint um, close to the house called Hugh Babies. There, there's a couple mm-hmm. of them in Nashville, and it's real good. Yeah. It's like a it's like our version. It's Nashville's version of In and Out. Okay, uh, see, I didn't get to try it when I was there, but next year when I come, it's me and you at. Let's do it different spots we got to do that too and i know yeah, she, she took me to a place that went up we covered crs this year for country radio seminar and we actually went to some of the best barbecue man it put some texas barbecue to shame martin's barbecue martin's. She took martin's me too, and i was i loved it martin's is great I was like, that's where martin's i have to take him because it's everyone's like top five so i was like this is a good how do you where do you it's take a texas person though. you know i feel like i feel like barbecue is so weird to like it's hard to like Arkansas bar- barbecue is different than Tennessee mm-hmm. barbecue and Texas barbecue is different than North Carolina barbecue. So <laughs> I don't, I don't discriminate as long as it's good. I love this. All right, Shauna, we'll uh, yeah, do this one. We'll do one more. I love this. Uh, the bird noises in the <laughs> your music. Do you plan to incorporate more ambient noise in your music? <laughs> Possibilities so, are endless, right? <laughs> yeah. I feel like, so I feel like some of them are talking about, I use my phone a lot whenever I'm recording. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of the times I'm just like getting ideas. And so there will be background stuff that will just happen. And I'll be like, I have to, I have to utilize this somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, And so even on, so like on Hill and Mr. Right Next Door, there are like, what you're hearing is my phone and birds, like the birds that are outside of my house. Um, And then on one of the songs called Don't Stop Dancing was like, there's a, 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 like a beat that I was hitting on a trampoline. And then in the background, my daughter's making this noise. And so <laughs> I've just tried to use some, I've tried to just be creative, you know, and because uh, writing songs on a guitar can be, it can get kind of like a mundane or boring or whatever. So mm-hmm. I, I have to find ways to, to make it interesting for me. I love that too. And I tell you, Nina, we touched base. Uh, uh, thanks for tuning in too. We touched just the top of the show too, but we'll, you know, we'll touch base on it again. Cause like I said, she probably just tuned in and definitely asked the question. Yes, watch uh, the beginning. I mean, for you that had to, and people go back and, and check it out on, on, uh, I believe it's uh, Hulu where it streams some of the, the archive broadcast, but yeah. man, for you that had to, again, I know you, you said it at the top of the show it was special, right? I was not going to watch it. I mm-hmm. was, uh, I felt so weird about it. I was like, <clears throat> I, I didn't know. I, I have a hard time watching myself anyways, but, and I still have not gone back and watched like stuff that I was on back in the day. Uh, but my daughter found out that I was on the show. Uh, there was a couple of funny things that happened actually. So my, my son found out that I was going to be back on the show and he goes, and he's eight. And he's like, do you think you'll win again? And <laughs> I was like, I, I hope that. we're not competing because that sounds like a nightmare. Um, and, but my daughter wanted to watch it, and I, I, I again, I was not going to watch it. And but we, I sat there with her, and we watched it on my phone. And I think you, it's cool to like for your kids to get to see you do the thing that you do. You know, um, it doesn't get to happen for me very often. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, if I travel and playing shows and things like that, um, it was it was cool to get to see her face light up or ask questions or. Mm-hmm whatever so it it uh yeah it was really cool <laughs> at least that aspect of it uh, I, awesome. I can only can only imagine too as well well i tell you what the yeah. uh, current single is uh oh, hello <laughs> mr right next door is out there yes. across all the digital platforms my friend and definitely and looking uh, forward to yeah. june 2nd for it's you i like cover you I like. mr rogers june which is gonna be awesome Yep. Ready for that to happen too, as well. And and Anthony, I definitely I wanted to before we end. Definitely, this was kind of funny. He said this about. He says, um, "This is funny." So I just had to. <laughs> we're talking about <food>. Brandon. <laughs> well, I just thought it was kind of funny at the margin. That so thank you for that very interesting comment today here on the backstage pass. Well, you know, so it's anyways. always <laughs> yeah, interesting comment there too as well. But it's just always I don't know the answer to that question, and if I ever did have six pack. Uh, I didn't remember. I don't remember that. So, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Great answer. Well, I tell you what, I don't have a six pack, Chris. So I'm not afraid to admit it. So that's it. I just leave it right there <laughs> where it is, dude, brother. Just, you know, and fatherhood changed it so much because you just pretty much 
if you don't cook, you got to have takeout. That's the way it goes, man. You got to eat <laughs> big part of it too out there. Uh, out. Check him out nice. at uh, chrisallenofficial.com. And of course, uh, hello, Mr. Right Next Door across all the platforms June 2nd. Make sure you guys go grab the new single. And Chris, if the Packers do win the Super Bowl, I'm sticking by that promise. Maybe even before that too we'll as well. We'll reach out. We'll reach out. Guest <laughs> we'll host. Reach out. Talk sports. We'll do it again. And uh, Dude, the Razorbacks are going to win their World Series. <laughs> The uh, college world series. College world so. series. I, I'm right no. there with you too, man. I don't, know, man. I don't know how good In we the are. Same year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we appreciate the time here on yeah, the uh, backstage so pass YouTube channel. And brother, uh, continued success going forward. One of the best out there in music, no doubt. And uh, we look forward to doing this again, my friend. Thanks, guys. Thank you all so much. Appreciate you. You got it. It's uh, Chris Allen on the Backstage Pass. Of course, check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe to it and check out the sportsguyspodcast.com. Back tomorrow, another show. And of course, Friday at four o'clock, we'll see you guys. Uh, on the show coming up this week at 4 o'clock on the Backstage Pass. Thanks to MitchMax.com, Bangtail, Whiskey, and our friends over at Hank Jr. Productions. We'll see you soon. Thanks for